Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Here we are. Sorry I'm running a little bit late, I just needed to reheat my, my pot of herbal tea because it went cold by the windowsill here just next to me. And I cannot do a show without a drink next to me because I talk too much, as you already know. And uh, it's thirsty work, so there we go. How are we all doing guys? Come on in, sit on down, chill out. I know it's the afternoon for most of you guys, but it's late evening for me, the sun's setting. And I'm in wind down mode and uh, I like to have a conversation during that time and have a bit of a Q&A with you guys. And that's what we're going to do today. I do have a few things I want to talk with you guys about. Uh, nothing major, just uh, I was listening back to some old videos um, which randomly came up on uh, my Twitter feed of all places. Which um, sparked my imagination. I thought that would be a good discussion for maybe a, a, a random live show. So I think I'll talk about it today. But I want to talk about intention behind magic and symbols and whether or not there's actually anything to it um and we'll get into it later but the gist of the idea is that there's this understanding in occult mystical magical wisdoms and circles that um a thing in of itself can be imbued with an individual's intentions and that therefore would give it its intrinsic power in a spiritual sense and in the past, you know, I've talked about these ideas and I've explained this is how it seems magic works and how sigil magic works. But as I've gone on with my research over the years, I've started to perhaps get a new understanding of this and realize I think there's a bit of a con going on that goes even deeper <laughs> below all of this. Um, and it's a sensitive subject. I'm not saying I know everything about this. I think there are a lot of people out there who would think they know more than me and maybe they do. Um, but I, I can only speak from my experiences, because um, this is this is a realm I kind of have a little bit of experience in, and, and of encounters with people who are fully invested in these theories and ideas. Um, so we'll get into that later, but for now let's just check the uh, chat, let's see what's going on. Um, it looks like uh, 6 9 left a few random messages for me, uh, talking about specifically what I just said there, that Clothes are charged with energy, with the intent, and it is a language to communicate both symbolical and literary matters. Even in a subconscious level, we can appreciate the emotional aspects of a persona. Just like the demographical emotional history of our faces, the regalia is like a sigil. Like when I see cloud patterns in a reaction to frequencies beyond human perception, showing that the physical world responds to invisible things, the architecture of our reality is so plastic and receptive that will always produce effects in proportion to the waveforms of our own cerebral transmitters and thoughts. <laughs> our whole spirit is a medium. It's stimulated and is activated by the, the beliefs of the confined within a morphic field that continuously generates the real out of the imagined. Now, that was a lot of word salad from my opinion to say very little. <laughs> no offense, Six Nine, I know your intentions are good there, but um, I, I'm starting to think all of this concept that you can will things into existence through your own consciousness and, and imaginations and intentions is basically a load of bollocks. <laughs> I'm starting to think uh, the real influence behind making these things manifest wasn't your intention, intention, the direction of your intentions necessarily, but perhaps simply just a sleight of hand from hidden creatures who have a malevolent agenda to make you believe you have such powers. And um, I'm, I'm conscious of phrasing this because I know there's a, a large contingent of people out there who want to look at someone like me, who's a Christian conspiracy theorist, and said, look at him, he's just saying everything's just demonic. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm starting to believe, yes, everything is quite literally uh, demonic. And that's what it really comes under at the end of the day, especially when it comes to these sigil magic concepts and these ideas. So anyway, let's check the chat. Let's see what's going on. Um, we've got Wendy here. Thanks for being here, Wendy. I appreciate that. Um, we've got Anthony Salerno, thanks for being here. MK Ryan, thanks for joining us. Um, we've got all the mods in today. And we've got Peter Hamlet, after thousands of years we barely got to 100 and think we have authority to claim love. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Uh, much love from Irk, thanks for being here. Um, 
we got Aaron, we got Vibes, we got Amelia, all the usual faces. Thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. Again, if you do have any questions, uh, try to send me a message somewhere in the chat. It's always handy to either super chat or put an at understanding conspiracy and I'll see it. Um, but you guys, you guys don't see this, but the software I'm using, which is OBS, I can't show you the OBS screen because it doesn't project that screen to you guys. I think, I think it might do actually, if I do screen and open OBS, nope, I can't share the screen to show you this, this, that's not how it works. Um, but, uh, the chat I've got doesn't highlight comments when you put at under con understanding conspiracy there. I don't see it highlighted like you would on YouTube's chat where it comes up as highlighted as orange. So it's, I may miss it if you do, but that's probably a good way of trying to get my attention. But with the software I use, it won't be highlighted. Um, so there is that, you know, <laughs> it's just bear that in mind. I'm not ignoring you if you've tried to get my attention, but uh, I don't necessarily see a highlighted comments like you would see them. Um, Kirk Ford, I'm sorry, did he say Taylor Swift? Lol, speaking of sigil magic. Uh, we, well, no, I, I think I discussed, uh, I discussed that particular musician in my last live show. Um, when I was talking with Amy from Eyes on the Right, I think she was talking about, uh, well, I, I pried into her understanding of, of the music industry because she talks about that kind of stuff quite a lot. And yeah, we got onto the topic of Taylor Swift and <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dodgy stuff going on with that artist. That's for sure. The woman is literally selling scrying mirrors on her website. You know, you've, you've got me going now. I'm just gonna have to go show it. Let's go to Taylor Swift's uh, website. There must be the official one at the top or something. Taylor Swift home. Uh, let's go to shop now. Just selling albums on this one. Uh, let's go to my local British store. Uh, she stopped selling. <laughs> she actually stopped selling all the witchcraft regalia she may have. Um, and now she's only selling her albums. Well, good for her. It's about time she took it all down. Actually, I think I probably took screenshots, to be honest. And I'll, I'll try and pull them up for another day. I don't know where they are, but she was selling um, quite literal witchcraft reg regalia on her on her uh, website. Um, it was quite shocking, actually. If I put Taylor Swift Black Mirror, I bet the product will come up. Um, No, I'm getting nothing gutted. But yeah, yeah, she's dodgy as hell. <laughs> that's true. Um, a lot of weird stuff going on there, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm not really going to focus on Taylor today for this. There's um, Again, there's there's a video I'm going to play for you guys, which caught my attention, which made me, made me start to think about this particular topic. And then we'll go on from there. So I'll just start by playing you guys the video, shall I, that I saw. So if I share the screen with you, here I am on Twitter. First of all, Shout out to the Nephilim Death Squad, Top Lobster and uh, the Raven, or David. And these guys are really great. I was there when the podcast started. I've, I've been in a group chat with these guys on Twitter for a while. And uh, you know, they, they invited me on to talk about the clowns. And we did a great episode together. You can see the full thing on my channel. Or I believe you can go onto their podcast and listen to the whole thing there as well. But they did take a clip from it here. And um, I'm going to play the clip for you. And then we can we can discuss afterwards what was said and how it led to my uh, understanding here. But I'm just going to turn the volume up. They, they did clown-inspired clown clothing, clothing, and it, and it had, had a bad, bad reception. reception. People were like, "What is this? This is ridiculous!" Like even by like our standards in the fashion industry, which is ridiculous anyway. This is too far. This is just silly. That was in 2019. In four years later, uh, in 2023, just at the start of this year, they did it again. And they went even harder into the clown aesthetic. And you'd have seen these runway models walking up and down, literally dressed like clowns, like wearing Harlequin clothing and all sorts of stupid, ridiculous things with red noses and all sorts of stuff. And this year, it's been appraised as a wonderful thing. And it goes up. And now you have like a, the, the idols dressing up like clowns as well. Like um, Harry Styles was seen wearing a Harlequin inspired jumpsuit at the recent thing. They're trying to like sell it to the people as a legitimate fashion choice. Dress like a clown. It's cool. It's in. It's fashionable. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's avant garde. It's edgy. It's what everyone's doing right now. It's the in thing to do. 2023 is the year of the clown. It's in season. 
and oh. that's been happening, you know. And it's like I believe from my research, once you piece it all together, that that's actually an extremely sinister move. They are trying to get the people to dress like Nephilim for the sole purpose of becoming more viable channels for the disembodied spirits now in the spirit realm. Is you that's exactly works? what I was about to ask you. That's exactly you, what I was going to ask you. I feel like I, I thought I feel like there has to be some kind of intentionality to what you're doing, but I suppose just the the gesture at it could also create some sort of power. It's a lesser power than true intentionality, but I don't do think, think I don't think ignorance of the law makes you immune to the law. I think mm. it I think it applies right. to everything. That's like yeah. does a does a symbol have power even if you don't understand its its meaning? You know what I mean? Like even if you're wielding the symbol but you have no intention behind it, does the symbol alone have power? Now I, I would argue that yeah, probably. So there you go. So as I was explaining there to, to the guys at the Nephilim Discord podcast that, you know, it seems like they're pushing the image of a clown on to wider society today. Um, it seems like with the sole intention of an, of an attempt to make it popular, so popular, in fact, that people will start dressing like clowns as a legitimate fashion choice. And on the surface, it seems like a bit of a rebellious fun against societal norms to add some levity to an otherwise depressed nation of people who have gone through hell recently you know or something like that but um esoterically in an occult manner if my research has any validity which i believe it does you know personally and i think i provide a lot of evidence to say that dressing this way is a specific thing done by ancestor spirit worship cultures to for one reason only for those who take it seriously to be possessed by the spirits and if we are dressing this way regardless of our intentions behind why we're doing it i think it's the same so the question is and what was posed there and what what was kind of brought up and i think a lot of people would lose the com would get confused with my theory and would necessarily think like well you know well just because you dress like a clown doesn't mean you're going to be uh, channeling spirits it's what i it's not that wasn't my intention when i wore the costume therefore that's not going to happen it's this belief that in some way that intentions the thing that makes it happen and i'm starting i don't think that's the case I, I i think and i think that's why we're in such a losing battle with the spirit realm because we're we're very naive to to the the nature of this realm and how it actually interacts with the physical world to the point where we think our our thoughts and feelings protect us in some way from rules like spiritual laws that that need to be understood and, and are applicable and unchanging if you dress like something that represents a spirit you will end up channeling that spirit whether you intended to or not and understandably for the nephilim who are disembodied spirits who want vessels they would love to be able to inhabit a body or a vessel of an individual who doesn't even know they're there or believes they could be <laughs> like it's being hidden is the the optimal way for these people you know that's that's kind of what the demons want they 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 don't want to be caught they don't want the the host to know that there's a parasite inside the longer they can go go unnoticed the better and that seems to be the the general aim of of all of these practices um and they offer things no, they offer things to those in these cultures who actually channel them. They, 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 they say, okay, you know, I can give you knowledge, I can give you wisdom, I can give you power, I can, I can make it seem like you, you can read people's minds. I can just whisper in your ear what the other person's thinking, you know, because I, because we're in communication with the spirit worlds, in communication with each other, we can hear these things and see these things that humans just can't, and we can give the illusion that you have the power to do these things when really it's just us making it look like you have that power by telling you things at the right time and i think this is where mediumship comes from i think this is where the um, the so-called magicians on tv that just seem to just have the ability to do this in front of someone's face and make them pass out instantly or you know these people seem to just know stuff about people that's impossible and they say oh well it's a it's a, it's a psychological technique called cold reading you know and they've s tried to make it scientific in a way like oh it's, it's just it's just this weird form of neuro neuro linguistic programming mind control you don't understand through subtle influence of words where we can make it seem like we can read people's minds and it's kind of like oh 
have you just made a deal with a particular thing inside of you that gives you this illusion that you have this type of power? And again, if you haven't already seen this, check out Zendrius, the YouTube channel. He's very old. I don't even know if he's on YouTube anymore. But he made this whole thing called Demon Magicians, this whole series. And I'm talking like over a decade ago. And it's showing all these, mu these magicians out there, TV magicians, that are just doing tricks, which a lot of them can be explained quite easily. But some of them aren't even magic tricks. They're just blatantly like breaking the laws of physics <laughs> with no real like explanation chucked in the middle of a bunch of explainable tricks, you know. Um, and he's trying to explain this, this is this is actually because these people have made deals with demons based. That's his premise of his theory. And what they're doing is just transporting things through invisible portals we can't perceive and making objects appear where it's impossible for them to appear, but making it look like the magician is doing those things. And, you know, a magician never reveals the secret, right? So this is kind of, uh, whether that's true or not, it's, it's definitely fun to speculate. Sorry, guys, my hair's long and greasy and keeps getting in my face there, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going away on holiday in like a week or two. And I've been holding off on a haircut until I go away. So it's getting a little bit wild, which is why I've got the hat on recently, just to keep it in one place. <laughs> um, as I get older, I, I'm starting to prefer my hair shorter. I used to have quite long hair, you know, um, growing up through my edgy teenage years. Um, but now I'm getting older, my, my receding hairline starting to show through a little bit more. I think it's time I, uh, I, I settle down for the short hair, but... Oh god, it doesn't half get greasy. I've got I got thin, like typical blonde hair, and it just gets really greasy, really, really easily. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Intention, I don't think, makes much of a difference when it comes to spiritual concepts. I think that I think that might actually be a part of the deception the demons would like people to believe. It comes under the "ye will be as God's promise. Like, oh, you'll have magical powers if you just, you know, listen to the, what we have to teach you and other, these type of things. But really, you haven't, you've not done anything with your, with your intentions or thoughts. They've just made it look like you have, you know, from behind the scenes because they can interact in, in our world in dimensions you just can't comprehend. And I think that's really the game. So let's look into sigil magic, because again, this is something I've kind of, I haven't personally played around with, but I, when I was at university, um, doing my art degree, I was doing my own thing, focusing on sacred geometry and psychedelic exploration during that time. This is before I was saved, you know, this is before I fully understood uh, conspiracy at its full form. It was my early years of uni. And, you know, um, I was kind of, around this time period, you know, I, there was another person in my art class or in the same studio. He was a year or two ahead of me. Um, and he was obsessed with sigil magic. And all of his artwork was based around creating sigils on occult pr principles from the works of Alistair Crowley and Austin Osmond Spare. And we'll get into this soon, who these people are. And I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of these characters. But uh, he was obsessed with, with magic in a true occult sense. He was doing rituals, this guy was. Some of his performance pieces, okay, were literally him evoking the goddess Hecate <laughs> using a odd chant and dance while, while burning things. Like This guy was literally doing summoning satanic rituals as art pieces. Like, and I, I, I witnessed this. I was present at some of them because they were, they were literally being put on at like group performances where other art students were also uh, showing their performance pieces or work he would be a part of it and he'd be doing some crazy ritual in the corner <laughs> i'm watching like what on earth is this and i um i actually interviewed the guy uh, and you can watch on my channel i think it's a conversation with the satanist i think it might still be there or it might be hit i'm not sure because you know, these, you know what YouTube's like, and it was years ago. I'm going to actually go check now if this video is even still present. I honestly haven't got a clue. Um, let me just have a quick check here on studio. Let's go back in time to content. Videos. Let's go way back in time to the beginning, shall we, if I can. Uh, I have 249 videos on my YouTube, and that's not even including the live shows. So give me a second as I quickly skip back and go back to the beginning of this early days of this channel. And it may, maybe, just maybe, it might be there. We'll see. 
uh, A Conversation with a Satanist. It's still available and it's still there. It's 11 minutes long, so I won't, I won't play it now, but you can go and check it out on my channel. It was published in March 10th, 2016, but the conversation actually happened in like 2010. Uh, so I didn't release this till six years after the fact, you know. Um, but it just gives you some insight into what these type of people really believe, you know. And he's and and there's another video afterwards called Understanding Sigil Magic, where I kind of go into it a little a little bit more. And I'm going to give a brief presentation today, um, and it's not going to be extensive. This is not extensive. This stuff. It's going. I'm going to basically read Wikipedia here to give you an overview, and then give you impart my theories and ideas on what's really going on, not what we're being told here on these certain websites. Okay, so this is not deep, riveting, going into the old occult books research. Okay, this is just cursory, giving you an overview before I go into explain my ideas. So if I share the screen with you guys here, so here's here's the basic Wikipedia page for sigil magic, and this is what they would have to say about this. So they say a sigil is a type of symbol used in magic the term usually refers to a pictorial signature of a deity or spirit such as an angel or a demon in modern usage especially in the context of chaos magic a sigil refers to a symbolic representation of the practitioner's desired outcome so this is where the intentionality stuff starts to be talked about you know it says here the use of symbols for magical or cult purposes has been widespread since the neolithic era citation needed <laughs> the term sigil derives from the latin sigillum sigillis or sigilla meaning seal in medieval magic the term sigil was commonly used to refer to occult signs which represented various angels and demons which the practitioner might summon the magical training books called grimoires often listed pages of such sigils in particular a well-known list is the lesser key of solomon in which the sigils of 72 princes of the hierarchy of hell are given for the magician's use. Such sigils are considered by some to be the equivalent of the true name of the spirit, and thus granted the magic magician a measure of control over the beings. And now I'm going to stop right there. It's believed by having the correct sigil, which is the true representation of the demon's name, it gives you control over the beings. I believe that's a lie. I believe that's what the beings would like these quote unquote magicians to believe that they have some semblance of control of what the demons do because they drew a pretty picture. Okay, I think this is where a lot of deception comes in and why we are in a constant losing battle and where this myth of using white magic to combat black magic is just non existent. There's only one form of magic. And it all comes from demonic influence, not through any human beings' abilities to draw interesting patterns or their intentions, thoughts and feelings. So carrying on here, it says a common method of creating the sigils of certain spirits was to use cameos, a special use of magic squares. The names of the spirits were converted to numbers, which were then located on the magic square. The locations were then connected by lines forming an abstract figure. The word sigil has a long history in Western magic. Members of the Golden Dawn were perfectly familiar with it, combining the letters and colours, the attribu attributions and the synthesis. Thou mayest build up a telismatic image of a force. <laughs> the sigil shall then serve thee for the tracing of a current, which shall call into action a certain elemental force. Again, nonsense. And it was used in the making of talismans. The sigil was like a signature or a sign of an occult entity. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, Beelzebub, I choose you. And they throw their Pokeball sigil down and it summons the demon. <laughs> it's kind of how they believe these things work, you know. Uh, because I have imbued my intention that this sigil I've created is attached to this specific entity, I can summon that entity at will by use of these talismans. And I think whatever demon is going to turn up is going to turn up regardless of what picture you drew which you think represents it i think that's how it really works i think they want to give humans the perception that they have some control over the over them through doing stuff like this i think the demons play along 
with these fully grown men drawing pretty pictures with crayons. Okay, thinking they have control. I think the demons play along with it and pretend to play ball when, let's say, a, a sigil is drawn on the ground to keep the spirit trapped. And I bet the spirit will play mime and be like, oh no, you, you trapped me in this seal you drew. Darn you humans having so much understanding of the deep occult wisdoms. You're so smart, too smart for me. I think that's how they're playing the game. I think they're playing people. You know, I, th I think that's the truth behind all of this. And which is why you shouldn't get involved in these things. It's all nonsense based on humans playing on humans pride because they know humans want to feel special and like they have power so let's give it to them let's make them think they have power over us let's play along with their games let's make them come up with all sorts of crazy books and signs and rituals and patterns and make them think that has anything at all to do with what we can and cannot do in the world let's get makes make them believe they have the power so we so we can gain more influence that's, I think that's what it really what really happened here. So Austin Osman Spare, artist and occultist, Osman, Austin Osman Spare from 1886 to 1956 developed his whole unique method of creating and using sigils, which had a huge effect on modern occultism. So this is the guy at uni was heavily inspired by this guy. Spare did not agree with medieval practices of using these, uh, arguing that such supernatural beings were simply complexes in the unconscious and could be actively created through the process of sigilization. So now he's saying, no, these aren't entities you can summon. These are made-up creatures in the collective conscious of humanity that we can create at will. And we can make our own egregores, I suppose is the word that you use. We can make our own demons and make, make up our own creatures with our imaginations and create a sigil to him with our intent attached to it and therefore, you know, have our own guide of our own conscious will or something. It gets really complicated. So Spare's technique became a cornerstone of chaos magic. It's also influenced uh, from Brion Jason, who experimented with combining Spare's sigil method with the traditional form of magic squares. Uh, calligraphic magic, calligraphic, I think that's how you say it, calligraphic magic squares were one of the techniques most commonly applied by uh, Jason. He would reduce a name or an idea to a glyph and then write across the paper from right to left, turn the paper and do the same again and so on, turning the paper round and around to create a multidimensional grid. <laughs> the same technique and consciously driven functions intention uh, functional intention also permeated his paintings in a real sense everything he created was an act of sorcery and again it's this idea that oh if i just draw this line here fold the paper over and draw another one here and just do it repeatedly i am in some way creating a multi-dimensional grid <laughs> which this technique will consciously drive functional intention and therefore this will permeate his paintings. What does that even mean? So these people start losing themselves in nonsense and, and, and big grandiose descriptions of word salad. And this is, this is ty typically what artists do to describe their own artwork. They come up with some egregious, pretentious description of why this pile of trash in the corner represents something deep you know? and in a way that's what these uh, early occultists are doing they're, they're, they're spewing a bunch of nonsensical sounding pretty sounding uh, complex sentences together to ex to try and explain something that literally is is i'm just drawing a bunch of lines and saying it means something you know um, so it says here in Chaos Magic, following square sigils are commonly created in a well-ordered fashion by writing an intention, then condensing the letters of the statement down to a form of sort of to a, a sort of form of monogram. The Chaos Magician then uses the Gnostic state to launch or charge the sigil, essentially bypassing the conscious mind to implant the desire in the unconscious. To quote Ray Sherwin, the magician acknowledges a desire. He lists the appropriate symbols and arranges them into an easily visualized glyph. Using any of the Gnostic techniques, he refines the sigil and then, by force of will, hurls it into his subconscious. <laughs> From where the sigil can begin to work, unencumbered by desire. After charging the sigil, 
it is considered necessary to repress all memory of it. In the words of Austin Spare, there should be a deliberate striving to forget it. In modern chaos magic, when a complex of thoughts, desires and intentions gains such a level of sophistication that it appears to operate autonomously from the magician's consciousness, as if it were an independent being, then such a complex is referred to as a servitor. When such a being becomes large enough that it exists independently of any one individual, as a form of group mind, then it refers, it's referred to as an egregore. So this is the idea that, oh, well, these creatures, which are demons, by the way, which have always been there, they only manifested because a collection of humans over time made it through their own consciousness and imaginations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is like... How do I explain this? You know how science tries to explain everything away with science and despiritualize things and concepts like this whole demon face syndrome we saw recently. They're saying, well, you've just got some kind of syndrome where something's wrong with your brain. It's not like you're actually seeing into the spirit realm and seeing demons. You know, we have an explain, we have a name for that now and it's documented in a science book. Therefore, science, you know, this is like the the the, the occult version of that. It's kind of like, no, they're, they're not really demons, you know. These are just thought manifestations that have developed over a long period of time due to a collective effort of magicians to create it by creating specific sigils. It's like the scientific occult explanation to, to shoo away the concepts that there's demons and you shouldn't be messing with these things. <laughs> you know? This is their version, and it, it, as you can tell, these people are just as pretentious as, as the scientists. Um... So it says here, you know, later chaos magicians have expanded on the basic sigil technique. Grant Morrison coined the term hyper sigil to refer to an extended work of art with magical meaning and willpower, created using adapted processes of sigilization. The comic book series, The Invisibles, was intended as such a hyper sigil. Morrison has also argued that modern corporate logos like the McDonald's Golden Arches, uh, the Nike Swoosh, and the Virgin autograph are a form of viral sigil. Quote, Corporate sigils are super breeders. They attack unbranded imaginative space. They invade Red Square. They infest the cranky streets of Tibet. They etch themselves into hairstyles. They breed across clothes, turning people into advertising, ho advertising hoardings. The logo or brand, like any sigil, is a condensation. A condensation, a compressed symbolic summoning up of the world of desire which the corporation intends to represent. Walt Disney died a long time ago, but his sigil, that familiar cartoonish signature, persists, carrying its own vast weight of meanings, associations, nostalgia, and significance. So there you go. <laughs> That's a loose idea of a sigil. And we do use sigils on a daily basis, most people do, in the form of a signature, which I have alluded to with my... Uh, today's thumbnail you know when we write a signature we are creating our personal seal a personal piece of artwork or image or sigil that we have imbued with intention and power and the intention and power is believed to be there and is believed by other people because when you put your signature onto something it makes it legally binding so in a way that symbol does have tangible real power due to our intention and agreed upon uh, understandings culturally Sure. So that I would say yes. It does seem like intention can influence symbols and give them power. Like the example of a signature is a good is a good example, and it's a practical one we can all understand. Um, but to the to the to the larger question here, would dressing like a clown therefore not be a bad thing or not channel demons? if the person wearing it wasn't intending for that to happen. And again, to, to get to the answers to these, I guess we have to bounce around a little bit more. And you, you read there, you know, we were talking about, if I read this, you know, it was talking about well, many things. Um, where is it? Where can I find it? These appropriate symbols and range them to easily individualize glyphs using Gnostic magic. So it's talking about here to how people want to work an, un an encumbered desire or bring something to them. So they put an idea out into the universe is what they're basically saying here. But they do it by making a, a symbol to represent the thing they want. 
and then they put it out into the subconscious world in the hope to manifest it in reality. And this is that, that this is this type of thing, the magic of affirmation. And, you know, putting out positive vibes into the universe in order to get them back. It's the same principles. Um, and what they tell you to do here is kind of use magic on yourself to help yourself manifest the desired outcomes that you want for yourself personally rather than, than upon other people. And this is like what they say is, is a white magic version, you know. And by uh, using the power of saying good things over and over again or writing powerful words out um, a lot, you know. I am one with the divine. Life is magical. All things are possible. I am magical. I am a magnet to all good. I love the eternal. The eternal in everyone. Always take right action. Saying things like this to yourself is like repeating sigils, which is just a series of words slapped together. You could call that a sigil. It's an image. Still, we call them sentences, but that is simply just a bunch of lines we've created with a pen, is it not? Um, it's a sigil of sorts, and then you imbue it with your intent. I intend to get rich or I intend to be a better person and uh, you send it off into the universe by repeating it out into the world through your voice box <laughs> this is the, this is like a, a commercialized version of the occult stuff I was talking about here and and you find it this is this is a the new agers who get into this stuff and have it all about light and consciousness and and bring it, putting out good in the world to bring good back to you through your intentions and it's all about imbuing positive vibes you know and intentions into the world and all these type of things well it's basically just occultism light that's what it is it's 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 gnosticism light it's it's uh the the it's sigil magic light <laughs> okay it's a it's a masked commercialized uh, easy to swallow version of summoning demons that's basically what it comes down to. Because if you go to its earlier roots, people use sigils for the specific reason of summoning demons. And hopefully granting the magician some measure of control over them for their own personal gain. And I don't think, even though it developed and got more of a... No, demons aren't real. No, they're just uh, collective unconscious manifestations of will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the original source was sigils are used to summon demons. Okay, it's like it's like their name and how knowing their name does it. But even in the very beginning, I do believe they were being deceived. Even then, I think the demon would still manifest anyway, no matter what you did. Um, but because you are showing signs that you want them to, they'll play along with the game you're playing. It's kind of like, oh, so this person wants to communicate with demons. He he's he wants me to be around. He thinks he can get stuff from me. So I'll let him do his little ritual. I let him think he summoned me um, so I can then appear in a, in a controlled manner. And if I, as long as I can get this stupid human thinking he has some control over me, I can work my real magic and get my control into him. You know, I think that's, that's the truth behind all this. I think that's what the demons are really doing here with these type of things and why we need to be extremely careful. Um, I, I really don't, I think, I think wearing the costume of a clown, regardless of your intention, will cause some serious issues. Um, I mean, I mean, it's a, a great example. Obviously, is uh, the Joker costume, Heath Ledger, um, and you know this this guy seemed to wear the costume of a clown on a regular basis, and it was said by the people around him that he he couldn't get out of the role. He was very method about it all, and it consumed him. You know, and at the, at the end, it was destruction for the guy. We, you know, we, we know the story. And now, again, I, I, I can't say with 100% certainty what happened there. But there were consequences for this. Psychologically, it messed him up. Didn't he have to go on, like, antidepressants and stuff? Didn't he have to, like, do things because he, he couldn't sleep? Because he was just in this mindset after basically wearing this costume. And I think he inadvertently made himself a more powerful channel. For the spirits, for the Nephilim, for the demons, by simply doing this. You know, doing this to your face has consequences. Whiting up the face, adding red lipstick, in this smile, and the panda eye thing, this will have detrimental effects. This will make you mirror something that's very real in the spirit realm, and therefore you will end up channeling them. Um, 
I mean, I've got example, I've got photographic examples of where this has happened before. If I can quickly find them here. Um, let's go to live images, uh, rolling images, clowns. Let's just see what I can get here. If I can get an example of somebody doing this in another culture. Um, <laughs> first of all, it's highly similar to the uh, Kabuki theatre masks here of the Oni Demons. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. It's pretty much the exact same thing as the Joker. Uh, but again, the, again, this is modelled quite literally after demons, isn't it? That's what the clown is. It is modelled after these specific demons. Um, this this particular one I showed you there is very similar to the Rakshasa demons that are south of the region of China, which go into the Indic regions too. It's identical. Um, so again, here's a isolated tribe in the uh, in Papua New Guinea. Who do the same thing they wipe the face up you know and they're doing it for specific reasons to communicate with ward away or channel spirits and just because heath ledger started doing it and thought he was just playing a role in a movie doesn't mean he's then immune to what happens when you do this and i think it said in the book of enoch the book of enoch uh antimony Maybe I can find the exact quotes. No, I'm not. okay. Probably I'm just gonna open. I'll have to just open the Book of Enoch. So give me a second. Complete Book of Enoch, standard edition. Bookmark while I'm doing my own book here. Um, and I have to just type in uh, anti money. It says here, Azazel taught men how to make swords and knives and shields and the art of working them in bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all colouring tinctures. And then it says, and there arose much godliness, godlessness, and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. And I find it interesting that this passage, there arose much godlessness. And they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways comes immediately after them being taught specifically the use of antimony and beautifying the eyelids and using colouring tinctures. Okay. And people have always equated this quote to being, oh well, you know, he's he's talking about um, you know, he, he taught makeup to women so they could seduce all the men and then they all end up having, you know, promiscuous sex with each other and therefore, you know, there was the breakdown of civilization, society, because the people weren't getting married anymore and sex corrupted everything and it's and you know, because people just couldn't resist the women anymore because of the makeup they were putting on. And it's kind of like, no, I don't I really don't think I think this they committed fornication is just a coincidence. I think they were gonna be doing that anyway, regardless of the makeup. And that's just a part of the of the process, sure. But I think what was being taught here, the use of antimony, is the use of makeup and costume to channel spirits, to communicate with... It, they were, he, he was teaching them a, a form of witchcraft. You know, the method I'm trying to show here. And um, what it means to dress like the thing is to channel the thing. So, for, so musicians like this do the exact same thing. They're channeling something for power, for ability, for strength. When you see people like Doja Cat doing it as well, and quite literally saying they made me famous <laughs> while getting tattoos of demons on her body and putting herself in clown-like poses and positions, they're telling you what she's doing. She's using a, an ancient art practice, the art of using makeup to channel spirits. Um, it's it's as old time itself. It's what the Hayoka do. The Hayoka empaths, the Hayoka shamans of the Lakota tribes of the Great Plains of Canada and North America. Well, they believe the Wakinyan thunder spirit, which rides a horse, and it's like a polka dot spirit that controls thunder. It looks very much very clownish in its drawings. Well, they dress like this in the hopes to communicate with it. They're trying to get in touch with the spirit realm by dressing this way in the hopes that they can stop the beast from bringing destructive storms. Because that's what this thing does, it brings the storm. So it's up to the shaman, the Hayoka, to channel the spirit or communicate with the spirit by wearing the costume of, of the spirit to try and get in touch with it in order to plead with the spirit, please don't destroy our lands with your storm. Don't bring rain, please. And more often than, well, not every time, but 
sometimes the spirits listened and said, okay, I won't destroy your place with all my power and magic and my thunder, my control over the, the, the earth. Um, and then these people then believe themselves to be powerful in a way. It's kind of a trick, the playing ball, it seems, is what I would say. But then in Africa, you have them dressing in the exact same way, channeling their ancestor spirits. So who's right? Or are they just simply communicating with the same spirits in different ways? Um, same method, though. You dress like the thing to communicate with the thing, to channel the thing. And this is what these things look like in the ethereal astral realm. But uh, yeah, antimony, as we're getting on to there with the Book of Enoch, is interesting. So let's look into antimony. So antimony is a semi-metal. In its metallic form, it's silvery, hard and brittle. In uses, antimony is used in the, in the electronics industry to make some semiconductor devices such as infrared detectors and diodes. It is alloyed with lead or other metals to improve the hardness or strength. But that's not all it's used for. It's also used to make makeup. So if we look here on the side, it's a lustrous grey metalloid. It is found in nature mainly in the sulphide mineral stibnite. Antimony compounds have been known since ancient times and were powdered for the use as medicine and cosmetics, often known by the Arabic name coal makeup. So this is it. They, they break coal down into cosmetics and it can be white and black. It's not just simply black, but it was used for eyeliners and it's used to decorate Many cultures use it still to this day. And this is the makeup many of these tribes are using when there is antimony. They're using the compound of the metal of antimony to create these colouring tinctures, okay, which is described in the Book of Enoch. All colouring tinctures for the beautifying of the eyelids, costly stones, the use of antimony. That's what these cultures are doing. This is antimony. It was quite literally taught to people by the fallen angels, um, the art of using makeup. And these people, these cultures use antimony um, for their rituals. They're using it in a ritualistic setting. Um, let's see what comes up when can we do this. So now it's actually quite poisonous. <laughs> it's not healthy to use this uh, in Western cosmetics we they don't really use coal or antimony because of its its poisonous properties over time especially if it ends up being mixed with lead um it's it's for these tribal cultures that you know tend not to think about that kind of stuff and when they're doing their practices and their rituals they're still using coal they're still using the same ancient practices that were taught to them um for these for these rituals and this is a a a mating ritual by the uh, Wadabi men here in Africa. Um, and they're, they're applying coal here because they're trying to beautify themselves to mimic something, likely the Nephilim, because it's something they hold as a beauty standard. And uh, they try to show as much of the whites of the eyes as possible and as much of their teeth as possible to give themselves a wide smile and bulging eyes. Uh, they color the face up uh, in multicolored patterns and then they try and jump as high as they can <laughs> and the ones that can jump the highest and are the tallest and can stay in this state of constant chattering on the drugs they're on uh, usually attract the most mates you know the, the mates that uh, the women are more attracted to because it's a beauty standard to be like a nephilim to be tall wide grinned multicolored um that's basically what it comes down to and you know like i said coal is has been used since, since forever <laughs> like, and it's antimony and it's not simply just to make people look beautiful it's used for ritualistic purposes and always has been uh, the egyptians love to use it you know look at this elongated head here <laughs> but yeah just getting on to the idea does just you know will dressing like a clown with good intentions protect you from it i don't think so I, re I really, I just, I just, I think intention has nothing to do with it. Um, I, I, th I think it's naive of us to think otherwise. I, I really do. I think, and I really do think it's naive to imagine otherwise. Not when we can see evidences that cultures do dress this way and do get possessed all the time, you know, and, and I, 
I just I just don't see how suddenly that wouldn't happen anymore because you, you just don't want it to. Like I can't honestly I can't bridge that gap in my mind and understand that. And I I don't really think we have as much power as we think we do. You know, sigil magic magic makes make things manifest through your own sigil power. And it's kind of like if a demon in the in the astral realm sees somebody doing this, they probably look at them and think, here's a patsy I can use. <laughs> ah, they believe this stuff works. Great. That means I can play with them now. I can start messing with them. You know, it's this idea of like, you know, using an Ouija board to communicate with the spirit realm. The demon will use the Ouija board to communicate with you if you give it the opportunity. Yes. But I bet it can still mess with you and interact with you without the Ouija board present. <laughs> if it wants to, you've just given it a, a method or a way of presenting itself in an acceptable form that you'll that you're looking because you're looking for them, right? You're kind of inviting them. You're saying, "Oh, come on, show yourself. I want to see you. You know, I want to know it's real." So the demon's like, "All right, well, this is this makes it easy for me, I guess. Um, this person wants me to be around, so great. You know, I'll use the thing they just brought, but he doesn't have to use it. He doesn't need you to do that for it. These things are thousands of years old." These things are spirits trapped in the ethereal realm, yes, but they're still on Earth with us. They're still earthly beings. The astral realm is just as equally a part of the Earth as our physical realm. It doesn't make a difference which side of it you're on. And it doesn't make a difference what magic you use, necessarily. You know, like They can interact in ways just like we can, regardless of, of what we do. And I, I, I think a large part of witchcraft... What they sell to kids and stuff like this, like uh, witchcraft, kids coloring books. Let's say, <laughs> you know, I saw something like this in. A, I was in a shop the other day, and I, I did say the witchcraft coloring book or something like that being sold in the shops. Uh, the magic coloring book, and you go through the pages, and it was quite literally explaining occult symbols for children with each page and what each god represents, the Baphomet was in there, everything, you know, and this is just in a, in a random shop where you can buy loads of toys for children. And it's, they're getting them early to get into this stuff and it's duping them at an early age to think that you can have a, you can have power over the spirits if you just follow these rituals and do these things. And it's kind of, they want you to believe you have that kind of power. You have the ability to have authority over them just by, knowing enough stuff and doing the right things and the right incantations and the right signs and all that sort of stuff. And this is the irony, okay? They will play along and make it look like it's actually working for as long as it keeps you involved with them, for as long as it maintains that channel with them and, and their ability to use you. Um, as soon as you come to Christ, as soon as you accept the Holy Spirit into your life, things will change drastically. And I mean that these things will not play ball with you anymore. Okay. And you can't serve two masters. You can't keep trying to use these techniques to control them and have Christ at the same time. But if you did, they wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> it's kind of like, no, um, I, no, you no, we're not working with you anymore. You've, you were, you're useless to us now and you'll lose all your magic powers suddenly. <laughs> okay? That's how it will work because they, they, you've just ended up, you've got Jesus in your life now and they are terrified of the guy. And they're going to just distance themselves, distance themselves as much as possible from you. Okay, they'll flee. And they'll realize it's not going to work on these guys anymore. Let's go. Let's just find another patsy. Come on, Legion. Come on, gang. Let's go. Let's go find another another fool or another dupe who thinks they can have magic powers and controllers. Let's play with them for a bit longer. You know, um, this guy's useless to us now. And they'll leave, you know, but not before probably trying to kill you first tends to be the modus operandi. Well, if we can't have you, nobody can. And they'll try and make your life a living hell in those early stages when you become a born-again Christian. They'll attack you and oppress you as much as possible. You'll have sleep paralysis, you'll have nightmares, dreams, demonic attacks, the law, visions, weird heart palpitations, illnesses will come upon you. All sorts of horrible things will start to happen to you because you rejected them and you turned to Christ instead. But up until that point, I bet you thought they were your friends. I bet you thought you had power over them in some way. Um, but you actually gained some real power over them, which they don't want you to realize. The authority in the name of Jesus Christ. They, they don't want you to realize that power you may have just come across for the first time. 
they don't want you to use it. So they'll probably try and kill you before you have a chance to use the name to defend yourself. Before you have a chance to learn that you can use the name of Jesus to defend yourself. If they think you're going that way, they'll probably cut ties and then attack first. But if you understand your power immediately, then you can use that name immediately. After demonstrating that power to them, they'll understand that you're a no-go now. It's not worth it. Too risky. Let's go to the next person who hasn't found Christ yet instead and use them for as long as we can get away with. That's the game we're up against. So I think I think as, as honest researchers of spiritual warfare and conspiracy, we need to start moving away from this new age language of intentionality. Like, it's, it's, what you, it's, your, it's your intention that matters, you know. It's how you feel about it that counts, you know. It's, it's what you really, it's what you really meant to do that matters, not what it actually does, you know. Like, yeah, of course you can wear a clown costume. You're, you're, just, you're just wearing it because you want to, you know, please the kids and make them laugh, right? It, it, it won't affect you because you, you're not meaning it that way. You're not wearing it to try and summon chattel channel demons. So, you, so don't worry about it, you know. You're not going to be affected by that. It's kind of, well, you probably are. Do you want to risk it? Is it worth it? <laughs> like, is it really worth it in the long run? Probably not, no. Um, and that, that's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Um, we don't have power over the demons because we feel like we do. Because we drew the right circle with some squiggles in it. It's, it's quite literally stupid to think that. It is. And I'm, I'm saying that with love, not to be like putting people down who believe this stuff. I'm trying to help you here. I'm not trying to like disparage you but i'm telling you now from from an outsider looking in it looks pretty dumb to think you could do that kind of thing especially when you know when you understand where these things come from how ancient they actually are what their intentions are and the spiritual war we're actually embroiled in here the only weapons we have against them is to put on the full armor of god stay strong in the word prayer and fast and use jesus's name as a sword to fight them off that's all we've got it's quite literally the only real defense we have. Up until that point, people have been doing all sorts of things, you know, voodoo, witch doctor, magic, um, rituals, dances, singing, drinking potions, um, doing the right rituals to the right or sacrifices to the to the sky or to the earth or to the to the statues or whatever. And nothing ever worked until Jesus turned up and started casting spirits out of people. And they were like, who is this guy who can do this? This, this, they were like, this is this changes everything. <laughs> like they, they were, they were. It's like what? This guy can cast demons out. That's literally what was going on at the time. And people came to him desperate because they tried everything else and nothing was working. And he was just quite simple: get out, go. And they did. And many demons who were in people, like this is the great example, you know, where this guy came running up to him and was like, Jesus, what are you doing here? Have you come to get us before our time? You know, like, and they were begging, don't, don't cast us out of this guy. We like it here. <laughs> We've made a home here. We like using this person. This person's nuts and insane now because of us. And he does the wildest, craziest things. And we enjoy that. Don't kick us out of our home that we've made, that we worked hard to create in this person, this victim. And he says, fine, you can go into these pigs instead, which they asked for. <laughs> <laughs> or they'd rather go in pigs than they knew they knew they had no chance basically and then all the pigs ran off the edge of the cliff and died anyway and it's kind of these things fear fear him and his name and his authority because that's and that's the authority he gave us he gave us that authority that's the idea it's kind of now you have the power to do the same you're finally free from them they are defeated now it's done they can no longer subjugate mankind as they once did unless you let them Unless you remain ignorant, by people perish through lack of knowledge. If you don't know that there's an enemy out there that you have authority over by using the name and authority I've given you, I've imbued to you, then you will continue to be fooled by them and you will continue to be killed by them and you will perish. That's how it works. But as long as you remain knowledgeable of the truth of what they are, where they come from, what their intentions are and what the weapons you can use against them are, you'll be safe. You'll be fine. These things will have no power over you and they'll remain a weak parasitic subdued pathetic enemy for all of eternity you know they'll they, in the past they may have bitten our heels but we can crush their skulls that's basically what it comes down to now that's what he has done for us 
And that's one of the many gifts that comes with being saved, this knowledge and this ability to, to tread on serpents. Because what these things are, they're serpentine human hybrids that got disembodied when they died and are stuck on Earth, causing offensives, seeking to destroy, doing terrible things. You know, if we go, again, back to the Book of Enoch, it's quite a good uh, passage there that explains this. Let's put offences down. Um, I'll share the screen. And it says here. And now giants who were produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from man and from the watchers. It is the beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth. The evil spirits shall they be called. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offences. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. So they're jealous of us. The humans, we get to have life everlasting. We get to be saved. We get to know God. We get to have a life and a body too. We get to enjoy that. They don't get any of those things. They hate us for that. and they're, they're, Their fate is sealed. They are not written in the book of life. Um, I theorize they're probably going to end up in the lake of fire at the end of it all. Um, because their names are not going to be written in that book of life because they never should have existed to begin with. And therefore, all they can do is just drag us down with them and try and do as much as they can. You know, just do as much as they can to try and destroy us uh, and turn us against each other and make us not know the authority we have and just live through our bodies for as long as possible you know and the less we know about their existence the more power they have because if we don't know they exist and don't believe in that kind of stuff they can freely dwell in our bodies without us realizing it and use our senses for as long as possible and taste what we taste feel what we feel see what we see smell what we smell hear what we hear because they live within our bodies and kind of meld themselves into our senses and kind of just live vicariously through us, you know, and dressing like a clown will make that channel stronger. That's It's used for that purpose by all these tribes. We just don't know that in the West and not knowing that doesn't save us from it. <laughs> and they're, they're happy for that. They like, because again, we don't, we don't have that kind of all power. Like you're only safe and have power and defense against this type of stuff to be free from possession and from things dwelling in our bodies. You're only free from that if you have the Holy Spirit in you as kind of like the first line of defense. And you regularly check yourself and keep things away from you that are going to make portals open. You've got to be active about this. And if you do end up getting demon, demonically oppressed, use your authority in Christ to cast them away and get them out. You know, and it's 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 it, you have to work you have to maintain it's a war it's a battle shots are constantly being fired all the time and you've got to be ready all the time to defend yourself and you know christians are not perfect just by nature of being christian we have to constantly have our shields up we have to protect our loved ones and our family as well as ourselves all the time we're constantly but opening up to attack which would make us want to open up the doorway again and which will mean we'll have to do it again you know and you get wiser. You get wiser with time and age, of course. Um, but, but definitely, that intention means nothing. Your intention is not a superpower. It's not. It's not a superpower. And there's this whole market called magic with a K at the end, which is trying to sell to people for millennia that it, you can you can be a superhuman wizard by painting some pretty pictures and saying some nice words in a rhyming pattern. And you'll have power over the demons and can use them to your will or something like that. And when really all it is, it's just demons making that illusion happen from behind the scenes to make you believe that that's the case. But all that goes away as soon as you bring Christ into it. All of it goes because they can't perform. They can't. They're not going to stick around to make it look like you can make things levitate anymore when Jesus is involved. They're going to drop everything and leave you. And you won't be able to make things levitate anymore because you you evoked Jesus. And they're just going to, nope, stay away, I'm gone. And you'll be like, why can't I, why can't I, why is my magic not working anymore? Make my magic work. And it's kind of like, <laughs> you never had any magic. 
You never had it. It was never yours to begin with. It was just these things in the background giving you that illusion, feeding your ego. And that's, that's what I believe is really going on. It's all just smoke and mirrors. It's all double blinds and bluffs. What we have is us here existing in the physical realm. And we have a spirit and a soul and a body and a connection to God if we should so take it. And that's our spiritualism. But we are to live a life here in the physical, a spiritual life and a physical life simultaneously. It's the same thing. Only we've made that distinction. Existence is spiritual. Life is spiritual in every aspect. And it's beautiful if you just take the time to to live it, you know, and, and live it as in the best, most righteous way possible and try and make it better for others, you know, and get a relationship with the creator of it all. The spirit realm that they dwell in is just equally as, as this realm, but disembodied. They lack more though. It's a lesser place, you know, and communicating with the demons from this lesser place is not going to enrich this existence. And it's the power you think you're getting isn't real. It's not there. There is no power. <laughs> like it's not, that's not how it works. You know, this is the prize where you are right now and what you're doing. And you know, that's one form of magic. There is this other magic that people do where they use words and symbols and artwork to influence people. Okay. And that is perhaps a more grounded form of magic that doesn't involve necessarily even have to involve demons. Okay. And, and you could, you could say, my intention behind creating this film is to influence people to vote a certain way. It's called propaganda, okay? Yes, sure. Let's call that intentional magic. But demons don't have to be involved with that. Humans can be pretty evil. You know, we can do we can try and manipulate people with art. That's magic in a more literal, grounded, earthly day-to-day -day sense. Okay. I'm talking about the demon stuff here. I have forgotten about the demon stuff, but there is there is this real form of magic that is being used against us, uh, which we do need to be careful of. And I am very well aware of, and I'm not denying. And it is the use of artwork, words, and language, spelling, which is spell casting. To spell a word is to cast a spell. So books, magazines, newspapers, wherever you want to go, whatever. You know, copywriters are the master magicians technically <laughs> you know if you're a copywriter of sports and you're constantly changing writings and things like that for companies to make it sell more products you know um yeah that's magic if you can use if you can use words and convince somebody to do something then you've used magic in a sense that's the that's another level of the occult wisdoms you know and that's why the, the media industry is so heavily controlled because that's magic they're using magical tools against us they're using words and images on a screen to influence the way we behave without ever having to touch us or come near us or even know us personally. That's magic. That's real magic. It's not sparkles coming out of wands necessarily. And then there's this demonic magic where people are trying to use demons to manipulate the very fabrics of reality uh, for personal gain. So I think there's two levels there. Um, when it comes to intention, Forget about controlling demons, you've got no chance. Intent, but when it comes to, if you have an intention to deceive, then you could possibly make that happen through your artwork, in a way. Yes, with, with demons not included, unnecessary. Because like I said, humanity does have a problem of being pretty wicked. <laughs> like it's kind of built into us, unfortunately. Um, and it's our journey to overcome that and get saved, in a way. Uh, so there you go, guys. There's a little rant about magic and intention and whether your intention even counts when it comes to spiritual principles like this and I, I think when it comes to the nephilim no when it comes to the real spiritual warfare involving entities out of our normal perception your intention counts for shit it means nothing but when it comes to let's say normal making artwork to manipulate people yes your intention is the, the modus operandi behind why that piece of artwork was even created and people do create artwork all the time with the intent to deceive people. Um, sadly, some people create artwork with good intentions that ends up getting abused and ends up creating negative outcomes. Uh, we need to be careful about what we put out in the in the world, that's for sure. Um, but I think 
this whole idea where it's like if I just put out good vibes into the universe and say my mantras on a daily basis and use my vibrational frequency of my vocal cords to say positive things, then that will manipulate reality around me in a way that will make positive things happen. That's where you're getting into the realm of you're just asking demons to do stuff for you. And they'll make you feel like you did it to yourself because you're a magic magic person or a god or something. That's where you're getting into the demonic element. <laughs> um, but when it comes to real tangible hard work of individuals who have made a piece of artwork with intent behind it, I want this to make people think a certain thing. That's, that's real magic in a tangible worldly sense that just only humans need. No, there's a distinction if people weren't aware of it. And I only know all this stuff, you know, because I saw people doing it at uni <laughs> and I myself have a degree in art and I hated the game. I hated the pretentiousness of the game and I, I couldn't cheese and wine myself anymore. I couldn't schmooze and brown nose gallery owners and people putting on shows to get my artwork in there and appease their shallow egos just by talking absolute bollocks for an hour about something that isn't that deep. You know, and that's the game they want you to play in those industries. And if you play that game, you'll be elevated. I wasn't, I'm very straightforward. I don't play those type of games and I wasn't willing to just do any of that. It was just, it was dishonest at, at its core. So I was pretty, dis I left with my degree, pretty disillusioned with the entire industry. It didn't matter how talented you were. It had nothing to do with it. It's how well can you play the brown nosing game? How, how pretentious can you sound? How much can you bullshit? And um, unfortunately, bad artists who are really good at bullshitting run the industry. So they want to get more people in. So the industry gets worse and worse and worse. And the people who get chosen and put in galleries aren't talented artists. They're just really bad artists who are really good at saying stuff about their bad artwork. And they're the ones that keep getting put in places, you know, because the person who put them there, who was putting on the show, is the same. And it's the blind leading the blind. It's just it's just mediocrity supporting mediocrity. And um, they don't even believe there's anything such as a beauty standard. They rejected all of that, you know, and that's the spirit behind all of that. It's just, I am not playing that kind of type of game personally. If you want good artwork, why not check out Elizabeth Joyce's artwork here? She sent me this lovely print of uh, a bunch of birds in in a in a window. See, look at that! Isn't that lovely? Now that's some talent, isn't it? That actually took time and effort. And you know, she she likes my work so much that she sent me this. We've got, we've got a Bible quote there. We got uh, Matthew twenty twenty two thirty seven. You know. Affirming, and you can get your own prints by going to Elizabeth Joyce Artwork at I think it's just dot com. She has a website, and she has loads of things like this you can go and get for yourself. And by the way, she didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'm just paying it forward because I know how hard it is to be in the art industry and actually have any success. You know, because it's full of bad artists, and talent is seldom actually appreciated this day and age. Um, my my dreams of being an artist are over. I'm too old, I'm 30 now, I'm 32 now, and I, I do this YouTube thing instead, and, you know, having kids and stuff, I don't really have time to, uh, to draw or paint like I used to, so unfortunately that's, that's out of the question for me, but while she's having a go to it, go and help, you know, give her a chance of actually making a living from these things. Um, anyway guys, how are we all doing? What's going on in the chat? Do we have any questions tonight? That's pretty much my rant over with. I've gone on for an hour 16 somehow, you know what I'm like, but <laughs> do you guys have any uh, questions? Do you have anything you want to ask? I'm going to try and go back as far as I can in the chat and recap. Um, let me just check in the actual YouTube uh, one because that shows me any highlighted comments and this like i said the software i'm using doesn't and it's quite limited to be honest so let me just quickly check close all these tabs help my computer rest easy right it's like someone did leave a super chat actually what's that about let me have a look sorry fan funding have you seen the imaginarium of dr panassas no i haven't actually no um but i know that's been recommended to me but uh, I'm, I actually don't, I don't really watch movies or TV or films anymore. I don't, I don't have the time. I just do not have time. I, I, I have, I have not played my Xbox in three years. I've, I've not watched TV seriously, like in a very long time. 
like I, I, I can barely follow a series. Like I just don't have time to invest in that, you know, and uh, I don't really watch movies. Um, it's just spatterings here and there when I'm not really there. I'm too busy thinking about other things and work and, and whatever, you know, so I haven't seen that film, unfortunately. Um, but if you want to give me a bit of a description of why I should watch it, I'll, I'll definitely look into it, you know, and you can give me the, the Cliff Notes version, let's say. Um, Sorry guys, have a quick drink there. Is antimony the black and white crystal liquid stuff they use as holographs to hide themselves? Uh, it might be. I don't. I don't know if that's the case. It wouldn't surprise me. It seems like it's a very versatile metal compound that. Uh, sorry, my phone went off in my back pocket. It's a very versatile metal compound that seems to have a lot of uses in in in. In technology so it wouldn't surprise me if antimony was actually involved in some really weird trippy stuff right now um dathan notsky thanks for being here there is coal liner out there you can buy in the store really you can still buy it. from what i was researching i don't think it's really popular or common in the west just due to health standards in general but yeah fair enough who did you say was the YouTuber about demon magic, says Tonya. His name was Zendrius with an X, X-E-N-D-R-I-U-S. And he has a series called Demon Magicians Exposed or something. And he, honestly, it's been going on for like 12 years, this series. And I don't even know if he still makes videos, but this was this was hot stuff back in the day when it first came out, you know, because no one had ever even thought about it. It was brand new information for us as young conspiracy theorists who were just getting into discovering all the occult satanic stuff. And his work on the demon magicians is it's just brilliant. You should check it out. It really makes you question everything. <laughs> it's one of those, it's great for showing the, the people who are just waking up, you know. Um, um, he doesn't speak in it. He uses image words instead with music in the background but it shows so many video clips and examples of what he's trying to say and it's, it's really well put together um if it's intense then knowing it's harmful corrupts the magic like i'm telling you there is no magic your intent has no impact on it and you know i know that was an early comment so maybe you've you've understood what i'm trying to say now but <laughs> Uh, are they still among us in a physical sense? I would be, I'd be weary to say that. I don't think so. Um, I think they'll be so watered down now and mixed in with humanity that you won't be able to tell the difference. And it's possible we're all kind of corrupted by this now to some extent, and we're all a little bit Nephilim. Maybe. Not saying that's true. I don't know. I do not know. That was just a wild speculation of a perhaps maybe scenario. Um, it does say in the Book of Enoch, that the punishment for the Watchers is that they had to watch their beloved ones kill each other. So the first Nephilim were likely killed before the Flood and were wiped out, but they, they also had children, and ch their children had children. And there was less and less versions that weren't pure half-angel, half-human anymore. They're like quarter-angel, two, three-quarters human, and it was going getting more watered down. And who knows if they made it past the Flood. And then you could argue about how the Nephilim came after the Flood and filled up the lands of Canaan. There's loads of speculation on how that happened. But it clearly did. They were there, you know, in Numbers 1333. They were as big as grasshoppers, you know, were looking at them. We were like bugs in their sight, you know. And the sons of Anak, and they were then they had to wipe them out, you know. And there's that's that's all of Israel going to reclaim the Holy Lands, this, this land of Canaan that was promised to them. And um, they had to wipe out all these tribes of giants everywhere. So we know they were there afterwards. And... Could they could and I think they failed in wiping them out. Like I'm pretty sure they, they they didn't do it, you know. And God was pretty angry with them, and they end up losing the lands in the end because of it. And and you know and and if you think about it, like they could have fled, and there could still be pockets around the earth. And then you have encounters with like the city car in North America, the mound builders who have these oral traditions and stories of contending with giant pale skin red haired giants who eat people. And it's kind of like, how old are these stories? Are they thousands of years old? Because they don't write them down. They just pass them down through oral tradition. Or are they maybe a few hundred years old? Was it not even that long ago? One woman who's a member of these tribes uh, has the mourning dress that was handed down to her through her forefathers. And a mourning dress 
is literally the red hair of the giants formed into a shawl that she puts over herself. Um, and it's this bright red haired weaved blanket made from the scalped giant. <laughs> like, and they, they kept them, you know, and passed them down as a symbol of them defeating the giants. And it's like, well, they can't be that old, can it? <laughs> you know, it wasn't that long ago. So maybe, maybe there's some pockets of these things still knocking about. But if you're alluding to the idea of, are they running the world? And are these elite families part of them? They probably believe they have the divine right to rule because they have angel blood in them. So they probably believe themselves to be the descendants of Nephilim because they have angel blood in them. Maybe. Whether that's true or that's just a delusion, how can we truly know? And I'm very weary to, to say, yes, they're walking among us and you need to find them because that's just ridiculous. How are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to know who is and isn't of the serpent seed? <laughs> like, okay. And I think that's the point. We're not supposed to play that game because it leads to death and destruction and genocide and all sorts of horrible things and extreme paranoia as well. And it's just a dangerous, horrible game and leads to death and misery. Nothing good comes from that line of thought, which is why I think it's explained in the, the Wheat and the Tares parable that you kind of got to let them grow together and you let God reap and deal with the separation. Okay, in the end, it's not for us to do that. Vengeance is his, not ours. Um, and I think it's so, you know that's all you can really say about it. We're not we're not here to play Nephilim hunters. <laughs> that's not our game. Let's live our lives and stay focused on what we're here to do. You know, save more people and live life more abundantly while we have the opportunity. God gave us a life to live. Don't let those things steal your birthright. Don't let fear control you. And that's what. Thinking like that will put you in. It's a state of fear, isn't it? You think you suddenly start thinking you're in in a they live world, and you're putting your glasses on, looking for looking for monsters everywhere, and it's kind of no good fruit comes from that. What are you supposed to do anyway? Say you say you you're say you're adamant that person over there. He's one of them. I know he is. I know he is. Something about him. His eyes went funny once. <laughs> As people say to me, his bottom teeth are a bit pointy. That's weird. When look. I have crooked teeth. So from a distance, they seem a bit pointy because they're all turned to the side. Because my mum and dad didn't get me braces when I was a kid and they left it too late. And when I was 18 and the dentist said, yeah, we could sort this out for you, but we'd have to rip your back two teeth out and then pull them and let them straighten out. I'm like, you have to tell me this now when I'm like 19. Like, I don't want braces on my bottom jaw when I'm 19 years old. Why couldn't you have fixed this when I was like, you know, 12 or 13? It's like, yeah, funny that. They just didn't because they were lazy. <laughs> but people do legitimately go out there and try and do these things and break people apart and say they're one of those hidden evil reptilians or something. It's kind of, okay, so what's your logical conclusion then? What are you going to do? What are you going to do now you think you've got one? Not just me, anybody. Are you going to hunt them down and hurt them or kill them? Does that sound smart? It's like the smart. What if you're wrong? It's just bad to play that game. Uh, so I don't know if Nephilim are living among us or not. Maybe, maybe not. It's not for us to decide or figure out. It really isn't. We would not be able to tell the difference. Just like you can't tell the difference between a wheat and a tear until harvest. You just, you just don't know. You have to let them grow together, don't you? There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do about that. Focus on living your own life. Um, that's what I have to say about that, you know. So I got a super chat there from Serenian Moth. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that's a cute little symbol there um brother what are your honest thoughts on the aurora borealis being the hem of father god and one of the father god's major ways he manifests himself to the nation so that they may wonder of him i think it's very possible that that's emanating from from god's throne or even for possibly in the millennial kingdom sense maybe that's new jerusalem that's emanating or christ in new jerusalem being the second sun or em emanating such light and glory with his presence who knows who honestly knows um but it's definitely a beautiful thing to behold i'll say that um uh sorry guys i'm just trying to catch up with the chat here um People with narcissistic personality disorder are demons and fallen. No, I wouldn't say so. I think they're just, just fallen humans. Humans have the capacity for evil. We forget that. 
we can easily put all the blame on on demons, but I do I do think people themselves have lusts and desires and are willing to do things to fulfil them. That's just the human condition, and uh, that's why we need to be saved, and that's what repentance is all about. And that's you know, if you sincerely want to be forgiven, God offers that forgiveness for all. You know, um, it's kind of nobody's really too far gone. At the end of the day, we can all humans, all men, have the right to be forgiven. But you have to be truly repentant. You can't you can't trick God <laughs> into forgiveness. You know, it doesn't work like that. Um, it can be dangerous, but they surely believe it exactly. Um, it's great learning these things back in school. If school was interesting, I might have paid more attention. You know what? I would have loved if they had just taught me in school how to do taxes. <laughs> Or how interest rates work, or the process of getting a mortgage, the basic stuff you kind of need to know, rather than teaching me about the, you know, the hypotenuse of a of a of an isosceles triangle or whatever it is. I don't, like, why do I, I don't need to know how a plus b equals c. I need, I need to understand um what how, what economic growth and how that impacts interest rates. I need to understand these things. <laughs> I need to understand what I really need to do when it comes to paying taxes if I was to be self employed and the processes and the hidden fees. I, I don't uh, teach me practical stuff that is useful, please. But they, they never did. Um, it was nonsense all the way. Um. Ah, Elizabeth Joyce is in the chat. Great to see you. I hope you like the little <laughs> promo I gave you there. Um. At least mine again. I'm trying to actually wipe my teeth. I just bought some charcoal toothpaste and I've used it like five times and they are not getting any whiter. I'm not going to lie. I have very yellow teeth because I smoked for like, oh, 15 years or something stupid. And yeah, sorry, I know you don't want to see. And it's got a filling recently down here and up here and it is driving me crazy because they did a bad job and stuff keeps getting stuck in it. And, um, when the when the whole thing happened a few years ago and everything just shut down, I had, I my my tooth up here uh, cracked. <laughs> it's a bit of gaping hole in it for like a year, two years, and I've only just got it filled um, a few months ago. And it's horrible, isn't it? I hate I hate going to the dentist. Honestly, uh, it's it's brutal. And my old dentist used to just be a butcher. Did not care about pain what management whatsoever. It was just hell from start to finish. But this new dentist who's taken over the practice. Uh, she was actually really good and I didn't actually feel anything, but my, my fear was still there of the, the drill because I have very sensitive teeth. So it's kind of, I really feel it deep in, in the jaw, <laughs> but she was actually quite good to be honest. Um, but it wasn't pleasant, not pleasant at all. Um, I believe narcissists are victims who came into agreement with their demons. Maybe perhaps that's one way to explain it. Maybe. Uh, the human heart is evil. Hate it when people say follow your heart. Worst advice in the world. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, who can know it? You know. Um, I probably shouldn't be so offended. He skipped it. Says Irk. Uh, what did I skip? Sorry, Irk. What did I skip? Did you? Did you? Did you do another one? Uh, I thought I answered your chat there. Sorry, let me just check the thing. I don't want to miss anything. Um, oh, here we go. It's about your work. No movie comes close to explaining the Commedia dell'arts and clowns and masons and so much more than the movie than that movie. All right, okay. So the movie is about the Commedia dell'art movement. Is it? It's like a rendition of it. Okay. Well, all right. I'll look into it then, if that's the case. Thanks for the thanks for the hint. And um, I appreciate the super chat. And I appreciate you. Let me know that it is all valid to my work. Um, in fact, that will probably come in handy because the second half of my book, um, which will be published in probably a year, year's time or so, I'm going to publish the first half in, in the next couple of months. Um, hopefully June, early June is my, is my aim. Um, cause I've, I'm finishing off the last chapter today. Um, I'll share the screen with you while I'm at it. Actually, I don't need discord to open. So let's close that before it gets in the way. Uh, but if you look here at the book. I'm just finishing off chapter 19, um, which is DMT jesters. And I've talked about ayahuasca and DMT here and the people who go to excursions in the Amazonian rainforest 
and then I'm going into machine elves and people who see jesters on DMT now and the DMT experience looking at scientific studies and trip reports and talking about Joe Rogan and Terence McKenna and all these people um, and once I finish this chapter here this chapter 19 about jesters I just have to write a conclusion and I'm not going to dwell too much on the conclusion because it's not the end of the book because once I have finished this one um, if I go here um, then I'll start going on to volume two which starts with clowns and aesthetics in folk traditional artwork and we'll go through all the uh all the countries you know and talk about each individual culture's versions of nephilim and how they dress like them to channel them um and then i'm going to talk about all the modern stuff which will be clown murderers i've already started talking about john wayne gacy here and all sorts of things and the florid doorstep clown and there's many more I've talked about the multicolored collective here already in a little paragraph uh, but then there's film and tv there's going to be a chapter right here for the second book and your suggestion there of Dr Panassas would be probably a good addition to discuss how they've uh, showed these things so yeah thanks for sharing that it will come in handy uh, and you know I appreciate anybody who shares anything with me about the clown research because it all helps go towards making this happen you know um so yeah I really appreciate it guys thank you so the webcam there we go um sorry i missed your comment again I, I don't see it all on this version very well on the software i'm using you you which you don't i can't show you the screen it doesn't share the software screen it stays hidden no matter what i do but from what i'm using i'm not using youtube's version where i see the super chats as clear as that uh, so i do have to go back and look sometimes sorry about that if i missed your comment um Paul, where is a good place to ask a few questions that are a little more in depth and can be gone into on these limited size chat boxes? Um, go to my Telegram group. I have a Telegram. Um, again, I'll share the screen. I'll let you guys know, but here it is. This is the Telegram group. Um, this is where I do my announcements for shows here. Uh, we have a history and mythology section uh, where we talk about all sorts of things. Um, we have a meme section where people are sharing all the craziest memes that they can about the conspiracy related stuff. We try and keep it relatively clean, but you know, things things slip through. What can I say? And we have art, music and tech where we can talk about all sorts of creative things going on in the world right now. with Dodgy things, weird things, you know, and beautiful things at the same time. We have a Bible study section which uh, can often go off the rails because there's so many differing opinions <laughs> but <laughs> we keep it we keep it cool you know we always we try to grow at least um we have prayer request sections here if you want want some help or prayer for anything you can request on here and we all we all regularly check in there we have a parent and homeschooling section for people to share inf interesting information and techniques on homeschooling which is great something me and my wife are planning on doing with our own son when he grows up a little bit more and we're already starting to do it now now that he's two and a bit and um, we have a general section for all sorts of things uh, it looks like somebody shared my video here and um, we have a cosmology section which is all about whatever you want to discuss to do with the shape of the universe and the earth in whatever way you can talk about it there we have one about the clowns where you can share any clown stuff you've found uh, we have a health and medicine section a testimonies and dream section uh, we have a dating and relationship section if you're looking to to build friendships or meetups or even who knows blossom some romance <laughs> that might be a place where maybe it could possibly happen uh, but who knows and there is finally questions for paul this one's new i've just opened it yesterday and if you do have a direct question for me specifically this would be the subsection to do it so we have 1143 members currently 78 online at the moment it's a great community um lots of lots on there and the link to find this and join it is in the description of every video on my channel so go and check it out if you haven't already i'm sure people might be posting it right now into the chat for you too but yeah that's where you can go and we have deeper discussions about this absolutely um and I'm always happy. I'm always in there regularly as well. Um, everyone knows who's a member that I'm always in there. Uh, and Dog Dog says, that's not the blank bear, is it? Not trying to be crude. No, this is a gift from my mother-in-law for my child. That's all it is. And I live in a very small house, which is currently an absolute tip, as you can see. And um, we're packing because we're moving soon. 
that this bear has always been in the corner of this sofa. Why, may you ask? Because it's a giant gaping hole without this here. And this tends to stop him from uh, trying to get in there. <laughs> so that's what the bear's all about. It's just always been there. It's never moved. Um, he doesn't even care about it. He doesn't even use the thing. Um, I like it. And he kind of became a mascot over time. People who have now started to associate it with horrible, heinous acts to do with children, that says more about you than it does about me, personally. Um, but that's exactly what he's actually there for. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, do you think the dinosaur bones came from Nephilim? Uh, possible. Yeah, I think, and I'm not here to disparage that dragons did exist as well, so it could be that too. A baking soda typically whitens teeth, Paul says, Linda. Yeah, no, I'm going to start trying all sorts of things. Um, I'm getting into that kick now of trying to... I, I, I might get Invisalign, because you can't see it, but this tooth is behind the rest. Uh, uh, it's caused them to go crooked. But I'm thinking Invisalign could probably slowly get that straight again. So I'm considering doing that as well. Doing that as well, but I don't really have the money to do that, so I don't. I don't know. It's not urgent. You no, know, it doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, I'm looking to get them white. Like I said, the dentist cleaned them, got all the plaque off with the drill. That was horrible. But uh, I'm looking to get maybe these straightened up. Now I'm a bit older and have the time and money, and and now Invisalign's a thing which is relatively invisible. That's the aim, right? Not a big horrible. You know, metal thing on my bottom jaw causing like priap is it priapism? Is that it? Is that what it's called? <laughs> or is that that's the other thing, isn't it? No. What's it called where you've got a, an underbite? I can't remember. <laughs> I think priapism's a really rude thing now I'm thinking about it actually. Um I had braces in the back of my bottom teeth. Ah, oh, the back, that's a good idea. Yeah, my, yeah. There's maybe an option. I don't know if I want to get those to be honest. Um, <laughs> MK Ryan, Gnostics, weirdos, and purveyors of porn need not apply. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, MK Ryan is the mod in the Telegram as well as a mod here. Um, and as time's going on, I might have to get some more mods for the Telegram because it's growing and getting out of hand. And he's kind of been single-handedly trying to keep the place clean for me. And I really appreciate all the work you do on the Ryan. I really do. But yeah, he's right. You know, no weirdos, please. You won't. I will, I will just get rid of anybody who causes any strife unnecessarily. I just, I don't have time for that. And nobody has time for that. And that's not a place for it. Um, it'll never be the same if the bear is gone, says uh, Wendy. Absolutely. Um, yeah, they mess with DNA. Um. Hydroperoxide, isn't that what people use to whiten your hair? Pretty sure, sure I used to use peroxide hair dye back in, again, my rebellious young young days <laughs> to make my hair whiter. Uh, I hate the way peroxide made your hair feel it's like straw. It's disgusting. But I haven't, done, I haven't messed with that stuff for like, well, I don't know, 15 years or something. Uh, I don't feel like the idea of putting peroxide on my teeth, to be honest. Um priapism is a very very different thing yeah it is what's it called though with the jaws sticking out it's something similar it's, weird, it's another weird sounding name the other reason i think i said priapism is because i've been looking into like idols and things like that and phallic idols are everywhere <laughs> they're just everywhere in like cultures as that word keeps coming up as so that's that's why i mentioned it um but what does it mean when you have a protruding bottom jaw what's the word prognathism so i wasn't far off sorry <laughs> so not priapism prognathism is the one where your jaw sticks out uh priapism is something else and i wouldn't recommend you google it either <laughs> sorry guys i'm trying to keep it clean but you know you know what happens um all right guys so i've been going for one hour 40 or something like that i can go for another maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes if you guys do have any pressing questions that you want to ask me ask them now now's the chance of a bit of a back and forth I, again i don't have much else to share on the uh 
on the front there for the um the magic stuff uh, while i've got you here though one thing that i did notice when i was on telegram there which i do want to maybe just quickly bring up is you know if we're in the um we're in the realm here aren't we of uh talking about the millennial reign and all these beautiful buildings and what what keeps happening to all these buildings they all keep burning down don't they it seems to be really common that all these buildings just these beautiful examples of some amazing artistic style and architecture and skill just keep setting on fire and have done throughout history and just just vanish <laughs> almost overnight and this one hit was a bit sad for me because if i share the screen here you can see that this um beautiful uh thing here in copenhagen in denmark this building with this amazing curved spire has set on fire and it's such a shame because look at this thing talk about my father's uh, has many mansions look at this you know many rooms like this building is the epitome is the epitome of those things and it's it's this building here that is just just burned down it's just gone now <laughs> it's beautiful example here of perhaps tartarian architecture maybe who knows and maybe this was some kind of uh let's say tartarian millennial kingdom architecture you know perhaps this was an energy harvesting device at some point rather than just a random spire but it's burnt down and that's really sad because i was actually looking at this years ago not even that long ago a few months ago i was i was actually scouring the streets of copenhagen because it's just one giant star fort copenhagen isn't it people don't know this but uh if I just, I don't know, let's get, let's get Google Earth up, or Google Maps. Um, let's go to Google Maps, shall we? And let's just go way out here. And let's look at Copenhagen. Look at this thing. Not only is it like it's a continuation of uh, Malmo on the other side as well, but Copenhagen is beautiful. And it, I think it's practically underwater. But look at the star fort edging here and let's change this to terrain and yeah it's just one enormous star fort you've got these things here these ridges going all the way down and these extra ridges here that emanate out to make it even more but it's kind of this thing i was already exploring the streets of this not that long ago looking for examples of tartarian architecture and I did look at that building. I did look at the one that just burnt down. I was like, wow, look at this thing. And I think I was showing my wife, like, look at this. This is incredible. I'd love to go here and see this. And now it's on fire and it's gone. It's this here, the Borson. You know, it's this incredible looking thing. Just gone. That's it. What are they? Are they lizards? Are those supposed to be lizard tails that I'm looking at there? Let's see if we can get another photo of it. Say what, let's drop a little man down there and have a look, shall we? Let's get a good close up look. Incredible. And then you've got this one just across the other way, which is still incredible as well. Uh, beautiful architecture. Absolutely amazing. Look at this thing. Looks like it is a lizard. These are like lizards or something, and that's its, their tails spiraling up, aren't they? But it doesn't matter now because it's gone forever, it's burnt down. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never see it ever again let's just cross the road for a better view oh, it's a bit blurry let's uh, move up a little bit possible is that one okay blurry why are they blurred why are they blurring these things out they've done that on purpose <laughs> there's no reason for that to be blurred out let's go over here there we are Yeah, we're talking about dragons. These are long-necked dragons, it seems, with the tail spiralling up to create this uh, odd-looking beam uh, made of copper, which has rusted, as you can see, and turned the classic copper green. Uh, but yeah, Denmark's a beautiful city, built on a star fort, with amazing architecture everywhere, with brutalist architecture to match just across the way, as they always like to do. But every now and then, you'll just see something like this popping up. These beautiful Onion Dome-esque looking facades and buildings and spires galore. There's one in the distance there, which I'm going towards, as you can see. Look at this thing. Um, you've got your Romanesque architecture styles as well. You've got this. And this is just the, the Parliament area, you know, where you get all the uh, the politics going on. If you go into the actual, the actual city, I'm sure everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, 
there'll just be more and more examples of beauty off in the distance and spires and churches and all sorts as is tradition with most european cities to be honest but yeah there you go i thought i'd just show that with you guys quickly any questions have we got anything before i go guys i've got like I said, i've got about 15 minutes to kill uh let me know let me know Um, have you ever read the Aurea Linda book? Would love to hear your thoughts on it. Seems to me it could be a retelling of old world millennial reign, although its authenticity is in question. Never heard of it, um, but I will look into that now you mentioned it, Freya. Thank you. Uh, I might make sure the birthday is just to filter out the idiots, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe. Um... Never works, yeah. Underbite. Yeah. Prognathism. Prognathism. That's the word. I had a dream about a bunch of idols coming to life and attacking me. Then I called out on God and Gabriel slayed them all. Interesting. Have you seen the video that talks about Babylon being a city above? I've not seen that one, no. Um, we've got Art here. Thanks for being here, Art. A bit late to the game. <laughs> hey, we've got a dream section in Telegram. That's right. Uh, what are your thoughts about China's sun simulator covering... Our Father's God sign of Jonah for America and the three days of darkness, which to God a day is like a year used interchange. Okay, that was a that was a compound complex sentence you just gave me there. Sorry, I'm gonna have to try and disperse that a little bit, but I have heard of China's Sun Simulator. And if what they're showing goes publicly is these things which look crude, what they actually have is probably way ahead. So it wouldn't surprise me if they're already messing with the sky and doing things like that. Um and who knows? Who knows? God, my hair is sweaty and greasy under this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, oh, the Nephilim spirits went into the water during the flood. So this is the movie Aquaman, probably. The Greek or Roman god Poseidon, etc. Says Cassandra. Yeah, the marine kingdom is a big deal. Um, after the flood, it seemed like it's when it, the marine kingdom became a thing. And would it not make sense that everything that was wiped out by the flood developed a kingdom there in the water afterwards? <laughs> like a spiritual and perhaps physical kingdom too, with the uh, the sirens and the mermaids that were genetically engineered just before the flood as well from mutated humans. Absolutely, I can I can get on board with that that theorizing. There are a lot of millennium buildings in India. Yeah, India is rife with that type of architecture. Uh, any more vids coming with Noel Joshua Hadley, says Kirk Ford. Maybe. Uh, Noel's reached out to me recently, suggesting he'd like to do something with me every three months or so, just, just to talk about things. Um, maybe, yeah, but I'm, I'm in the works. I'm open to that. Um, like I'm, I'm currently in the middle of doing a lot of stuff though in my personal life. I'm moving around and and, and I have a holiday coming up as well. And I've got, I'm not really in that position right now where I, if I'm booking anything, it's for like July with people. <laughs> so <laughs> until then, I'm just working, getting some content together to release for my holiday, so I can take a break. You know, because this is work. This is a full time job, and it does take a lot of time of my life. Um, I am cutting back on my videos a little bit. Um, I'm going to release a video four days a week rather than every day. Two of those will be live shows on a Wednesday and Sunday. So this is one show now. And on Sunday, I'll do my truth of therapy sessions. Um, and then I'll probably release a video on Monday and Friday in between, um, rather than every single day. I just can't keep up that kind of workload. It's, it's, it's affecting my home life balance, I suppose. And also it's just dackering me out. It's really tiring. Um, you know, if you guys, but if you guys want to help support the channel in any way, because obviously less content means less ad revenue. That's the truth. Uh, you can always support me on Patreon to help me out <laughs> with, the, with the coming shortfall. Uh, $5 a month will get you access to loads of extra content. And that's literally the limit. That's the threshold. Um, that's all you have to pay to get access to everything. There's loads of fun stuff on the after show commentaries with people. Um, and also previews for upcoming videos and um, exclusives on there, which can't be on any other platform because they're just a little bit too spicy as well. So consider joining Patreon if you haven't already, guys. I have like 160 free members on there who have access to nothing. <laughs> they can't get access to or see anything at all being a free member. But if I can convince all those free members to just come on over and being paid all my all my worries would be over <laughs> and i could just focus on making content without having to worry about feeding my family as well 
So please consider it if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. Um, but yeah, guys, there's a bit of an update on on the channel's politics and what's going on behind the scenes for me there. But I might, yeah, I might have a conversation with Noel Hadley again someday. Um, it's, it's on the cards, it's on the tables. I just need to figure it out and timings of stuff. Um, the Tesla appropriate scientific research from the Millennial Kingdom. Maybe arts, maybe Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Um, it seems like he was trying to back engineer the ether energy, which was probably being used during the time of, of Christ, if that was the case. I can't imagine Christ was burning fossil fuels. <laughs> so, And these buildings do feel, well, it seems like they're more practical than anything else. So, yeah, interesting. Saves me a trip. Star forts are awesome. <laughs> Saves me a trip. <laughs> my, my wife's not interested in architecture at all. So I suppose she's happy she doesn't have to go anymore. Um, cool beans. Paul's patron is absolutely worth it, says Elizabeth Joy. Thank you. I try to. I'm trying to fill it up with stuff, you know, loads of stuff. Um, and there'll always be stuff on there, which is like behind the scenes for the book. I post regular passages on there as well. I try to, um, before the book's released, I'll probably be releasing samples of the book cover. Um, once I have the book ready to publish, maybe a week later before the publish date, I'll release hints of this is what the book cover is going to be like. This is the design, all these type of things. And you know, that's where that stuff will go as well as just extra content. Every time I do a live show with a content creator, I always have an after show with them where we're just talking about what we just discussed and extra stuff and, um, you know, back and forth, personal things, whatever it is, you know, not, not too, per I'm not revealing all the personal lives, you know, but just whatever it is. And sometimes that can end up being a full 40 minute show and of its own, right? Which wasn't live, you know? So I just put that on Patreon and you can go listen to just two content creators just talking about what it, what it is to be a content creator, I suppose. And, the behind the scenes stuff, you know, and the type of conversations we have with people, all that kind of stuff is on there as well as, um, there's actually a video on there, which if I bring Patreon up, actually, I want people to know about this before I release it. Um, I'll find it. Sorry, my internet's going a bit slow. I need to start using a wired connection. I can do the the modem's right there. I need to, I need to start plugging the wire into this thing. Um, but yeah, there is a video. You know, like the, the just the energetic power of. There you go. That's what that was playing in the background. Um, so I did a podcast with a podcaster called We the Ether. So I'll share the screen. Here we go. So this guy, We the Ether, and um, it's a relatively new age channel. Okay, he has this. Um, I'll show you, but Instagram, We the Ether. You know, this is his channel. One point four million followers, um, and he has his own thing on the side as well. And he has a YouTube channel, I think, with like one point four k subs or something like that. Um, but you know, the, this, his audience is naturally going to be leaning more towards conspiratorial, but also ethereal chakra, energy frequencies, vibration type thoughts and things, the I Ching, you know, spiritualism angles, all that type of stuff. So we would classify that under new age spirituality, spirituality, philosophy, and growth, that type of stuff. But he was a gentleman. He was really nice to talk to. And he says he really likes my work and he appreciates what I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, we had a great back and forth here just discussing concepts and ideas. And I sh explained my view on the DMT realm and the experiences and what my work is talking about and what I believe these things are. But I put a lot of effort into the images for this whole thing to try and really hit home the point of what I'm saying and saying, I'm not just I'm not just saying these things. I can visually prove it. And I managed to succinctly in like an hour sum up the entire theory as best I possibly can while also appealing to that that type of audience you know and trying to help them understand from point references they'll probably understand like the Wakinians and the Hayokas and you know, the Wanginas and you know and um, theatre and art and music and fas the fashion industry for example and I, I've tried to touch on all the things which I know appeal to a broader audience 
Um, so about the hat man and circuses and all sorts of things. And the, all the images are really put in there in a, in a, in a fun way to back everything up. Um, so this is going to get released soon. I'll probably release it when he releases his, whenever that's going to be. I don't know. I'll let him do his first. And then I'll release this on my channel too. Uh, but this is from the 11th of April and I'm looking forward to releasing this one. I think it's going to be a great one to share with, um, you know, people who aren't necessarily Christian. I've tried to tailor what I'm saying here to reach those people with the biblical perspective, you know? Um, so hopefully we can share that when this does get released, I would like listeners to share it, promote it, do as much as they can to get it out. Because I think this one can really, really reach a lot of people with the biblical Christian narrative and help explain spiritual warfare to an otherwise skeptical community. Uh, so yeah, if you want, if you want to watch it rather sooner rather than later, I don't know when this is being released. You can, like I said, you can always join Patreon and this will be there for you. This is one of the many videos there waiting you to check out. So there we go, guys. Just a bit of insight to what's going on. Um, but yeah, check that out if you haven't already and look forward to that video. Um, and yeah, you actually, can, that's the point, the GoFundMe. Um, people will know I've closed pre-orders for the GoFundMe now. So a $100 donation will no longer get you access to a free, well, to a signed copy of the book. That's closed now. I'm not doing that offer anymore. Uh, you can still donate, though, to help me with the process and the payments and the shipping of all the books and all the rest of it and you know, the, the cost of publishing. Um, and that will still get you a special thank you in the book. Your name will still go in the book as an as a acknowledgement. So that is still available. If you, if you donate anything at all to the GoFundMe, you will get a special thank you personally in the book. But you can donate anonymously. And if, if your donation name has anonymous next to it, I won't put you in the book. I'll respect your wishes. Okay, that's how it works. Um, but that's that's still going as well. If, if you do want to support the book and any cost that, that accrues for me, that's always there for you guys to do. And anything would be appreciated at all. Uh, but Patreon really is the best way to support me. That's That's the way I can guarantee I will still have income if one day YouTube just decides to shut it all down. Because you know what they're like. You know what YouTube can be like. They're very arbitrary with it as well. They can just do it for any reason at any moment. The sword of Damocles is just resting above my head at all moments with that. So I would ideally like all the people who like what I do to be on Patreon. So then when things do shut down, I just move over to Rumble, which earns me no ad revenue whatsoever. But at least I have that support network from Patreon as a backup. So I don't have to just leave and get a job like working for the man instead. You know, this is how I do this and put so much time into it because i it needs to earn me money to do this i can't, I can't just do this for, I, I, time is quite literally money you know that's the way to describe this world isn't it you know and i love doing this and, and i love that i can make a living enough to support my family doing this too um I, I do not want to go back to being a manager of a supermarket. I just cannot do it. I cannot do it. So um, hopefully the book when published as well should be a great supporter for the family too. I'm hoping that too. Um, but yeah, early stages, time's going on. And again, that's why I would really love, uh, I would love patrons to grow more than it, more than it, more than anything. That would be wonderful. Um, CERN launching on the April 5th. And how the three rockets that were shot at the eclipse and also all the information, the National Security Guards being deployed and the attack from the planes. Yeah, a lot went on with that eclipse, didn't it? Absolutely. I made my own video about that already, if you haven't seen it already. Um, uh, it's, I'm not here to say nothing might not happen in three months' time. And a lot of strange occurrences seem to revolve around that date. Um, but it also felt pretty contrived as well, like they were purposely trying to wind us up. So I'm always sceptical about those type of things. Always have been. Um, Freeman Fly might be a good guest. He's heavy into conspiracy. He's not a Christian, but he has Christian guests and feels that Christians are key to fighting it. Yeah, I used to watch Freeman Fly years ago. Is he still around? Is that guy still still happening? Honestly, I didn't realize. I used to. I was. I was subscribed to that guy in like 2010 or something. Like I thought he disappeared with quite a lot of people of that era. I'll have to look into him again. I didn't know he was still knocking about. Yeah, but fair enough. Is he on a different platform? He must be on a different platform. He's not on YouTube anymore, right? But Freeman is still around. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll reach out to him. I'll reach out to him. Um.
talking about fossil fuels and how there's no such thing. Dog, dog, ha, ha, Paul, priapism is a condition where you're, let's say, the morning wake-up state of a male privacy doesn't go away. I know, I know what it is. It's just, it's very close to prognathism. <laughs> so I got them mixed up. I know the difference. <laughs> but yes, I did not mean to say priapism. Absolutely. Um, some antidepressants cause it. <laughs> <laughs> um, clickbait with royal in the title no I'm not I, I don't talk about the royals I'm not interested in that um, seem to be contrived definitely believe this introducing inducing fear to controllers I think that's what the whole all these type of events are and um, I'm not saying the eclipse didn't happen clearly something happened um, but what I'm saying is the media hype surrounding it is kind of never waste a good event or an opportunity at a, and they've used that as an opportunity to really get the christians all rattled you know um trying to equate it to being the sign of jonah and all these other things and as a warning for america to change the repent or suffer judgment and all these type of things and it's kind of like is that really what's happened or have they played it out in the media to make you think that's what's going on you have to you've got to be careful Banned from YouTube, says Salerno, yeah. Um, familiar with Now You See TV, John Pounders and David Carrico. Is it Carrigan or Carrigan? I thought it was Carrico. Uh, yes, Kirk, I'm familiar with them. Um, I used to watch a lot of their stuff years ago, but I stopped watching it years ago as well, to be honest, because it just wasn't my style. I'd, I'd never really been a fan of their presentation style. Um... But I always just thought of them as Christian truth channel out there, you know, nothing. But then when they started attacking the people who talked about the Millennial Kingdom theory, uh, I, I, it makes you question things, you know, and it's a shame that they, had, they took that point of view. Is there malevolence behind it or is it just ignorance? Who knows? But uh, I've never really watched them anyway, so I don't consider much of a loss to be, either way, you know, and I don't consider their opinions to be all and end all on anything, on anything much, to be honest. Um but yeah, I know they have a big following. I know they've been in the game for years. Uh, nice to hear that, Plato. Sometimes it feels strange and unique how the journey drives you around, but it seems it's not. It got dark two times during the eclipse. That's interesting. I didn't know that happened. Freeman flies an old timer, GLP, ATS, Red Ice, Red Ice Radio. Yeah, I used to listen to Red Ice uh, podcasting and radios, the, the the couple. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Red Ice were, yeah, they were good. They were good at what they did. Uh, I think they must have moved to a different platform or something, right? I don't know. There was the golden age of conspiracy when all that was going on. <laughs> I'm just living, I'm living in the wreckage now. I'm just still like making content in the ruins of the golden age of conspiracy. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the little season of conspiracy. <laughs> That's where I'm living. Uh, I got a glimpse of the, of the millennial reign of conspiracy, the golden age of it. But uh, I'm now living in the little season of conspiracy where things are getting weird. <laughs> so that's where I'm living. Um, I'm not even in the path of totality either. It was 76% here, says Wendy. Yeah, no, no that, that does sound fascinating. That's weird, isn't it? Something something weird's going on with all that. I, I, do, I still am under the impression that we do not even fully understand this creation in like a little bit. I think it's way more psychedelic and trippy than we can understand and what we're seeing are just not what we've been told and we just do not comprehend the multidimensional faceted nature of things like moons and suns and stars i think I'm, I'm of the world view that it's just way beyond our comprehension and what we see that makes the sun do this thing we call an eclipse is just something else that we're just so ignorant about beyond measure that maybe we'll never even understand it <laughs> that's kind of how i see it these days um Do you think nuclear weapons are real? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I've, I saw all the work like the rest of you, all the videos that came out years ago about that. Uh, but I also saw a lot of videos that saying that uh, jet fuel is fake as well and planes don't need fuel to fly. It's all air pressure too and all this type of stuff. And, and you can fall into that realm of conspiracy where it's like everything is fake, nothing is real. And, you know, I'm, I'm not here to say yes or no on a lot of that stuff. They're just not, That's just not my fight. Um, and I feel like it, for me personally and what I do on my channel, that stuff is inconsequential though interesting warrens and rabbit holes to go down and think about um on the grand scale of things i'm more into the spiritual warfare stuff on this channel that's kind of where i go you know um so i'd have whatever but I, don't, I don't know if nukes are fake or real probably you know with just to go in and be a full-fledged conspiracy theorist sure they're probably all fake it's probably all fake isn't it it's probably just all fear inducing nonsense and propaganda who knows <laughs> i'm not I can't say that with 100% certainty, can I? I, I can't, how can I possibly say that, you know, I don't know, um, but I know, I know there's a huge contingent out there, Donna, that do think, yeah, it's all fake, and maybe they're right. Um... Have you ever looked at the apotic a Potamkin, a Potamkin monster, giant from the Twilight Saga series, how they blatantly put it out, it's honestly truly evil. I have never seen that. You've got my Apotamkin monster. Let me type that in, let's see what comes up. Apotamkin. Right, the cold one. Well, if that, if that isn't a Nephilim, I don't know what is. <laughs> that is quite clearly a nap. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this thing. All right, look at this clown. Uh, look at this, guys. That is pretty much what I've been talking about, right? <laughs> Multicolored, fractal pattern skin, wide grinned reptilian, big eyed snake monster thing that ate people. That's right there. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> I've not looked into that, but thanks for showing me. Um, is it legit? Is, is it real? Is that a thing? A creature in Native American mythology, according to mythology, is a giant fang sea monster that lives at the Passamaquoddy Bay and pulls people in to eat them, particularly careless children. Um, wow. So if it's not depicted like that, it's depicted as a snake? Okay, well, either way, symbolically speaking, there's probably just a Nephilim. That looks like a Nephilim to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's all it is. The cold one, as it's known. Um, that, the representation of the same thing. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard of it till now, but it, it pretty much does just look like a pretty basic Nephilim clown, doesn't it? Um, yeah, fair enough. So if you wonder what the Nephilim look like, something like this. <laughs> There we go. Dislocating its jaw to eat its prey, as I predicted. Yeah, all the rest of it. Um, terrifying stuff. Absolutely terrifying stuff. But thanks for sharing that one. That's interesting. That's going in the book. <laughs> I'm going to put that one in the book for sure. Uh, as an example. Um, this piece of artwork is particularly popular, isn't it? Is this from a rock drawing or something? Is that where they source this image from? I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. It's definitely a Nephilim clown. I'll say that for sure. Um, Madam Medusa, would love to hear more of your Christian viewpoints. Have you looked into the real Holy Land is the USA? Very mind-blowing. Um, I've heard a lot about it. I haven't done enough of a deep dive to get all the specifics of that yet. Um, but I'll, I'll look into that for you. But I talk about Christianity on the channel here and there all the time. Um, I'm very much, I'm not like a preacher type Christian. Uh, you won't find me throwing a load of Bible verses out often, although I do every now and then. I try and communicate words from the Bible into the way I speak and the sentences I say, because um, I'm trying to reach the audiences out there who don't want Bible bashing. <laughs> they would know, and maybe they can hear concepts that are biblical without realizing it. And that will then hopefully lead them to look into it the, the, themselves a bit more, you know. So my style is designed to be a bit more like that. 
Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I suppose with the Millennial Kingdom stuff, I've talked more about Christian Christianity and, and the faith and the and the verses and the base more than anything in those videos. You know, where I've got into the the word itself openly and read passages out loud and offered interpretations and stuff. So maybe check out all my Millennial Kingdom stuff if you want to. I do reference the Bible here and there in the Nephilim like clown stuff. But, but I'm mainly just giving overviews of histories rather than specific quotes. Um, but, you know, I, when I do my personal talks like this, you've heard, you've heard me as I spoke today in the previous rant at the start. I was throwing in loads of verses and hints of biblical concepts in the things I was saying without saying, quote, verse passage, you know, uh, then saying it. I was just saying it as though I was saying it in, within, within a sentence. That's kind of how I do that type of thing. But, yeah, like I said, let's go check out all my backlog of work and I'm sure you'll find a lot of Christian viewpoint stuff in there as well. I am, I am a non-denominational Christian. That's what I would class. I'm a non-denominational contrarian conspiracy theorist Christian. <laughs> Something like, I guess that's a lot. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but I, I guess that's kind of what I am in a way. Um, Dr. Panassus is the movie that Heath Ledger playing a clown died making, not Batman, says Irk. Interesting. Yeah, okay, you guys are talking about stuff now in the chat. I just cannot say out loud. I'm sorry, it's just it's that simple. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read those ones out. It's kinda like you're purposely trying to get this channel taken down. <laughs> <laughs> either way guys i've been um i've been going for over two hours now so i'm gonna call it a night uh, thanks for being here thanks for listening like i said at the at the start please consider joining patreon if you haven't already and you want to help support me do this more often uh links are down below five dollars a month will get you access to all the extra content so go and check that out you can still support the book at the gofundme links down below the first book will be published in the next couple of months so pre-orders are closed but any donation at all will get your name a special mention in the book as an acknowledgement. So that's still available if you want to go to the GoFundMe and offer any support there. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for listening. And as always, God bless.